it sets you free. It makes men, makes them free. Okay, so let's see if we can get back on track here. I want to go back to that first scripture that we read in, in segment one. And that would be in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1. And we looked at verse 7 that talked about, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. But I want to look at the scriptures that, that immediately surround that. It's like verse 7 is sandwiched in between these other thoughts. So they're connected. He says in verse 6, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. Now, he was talk, Paul was talking to Timothy about the gifts of God that were placed within him to use, okay? They were given to him by God to use for the ministry. Then he says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. He goes on to say, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us, and you go on and on there, for his own purpose. Uh, well, maybe we should read that. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, and is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ to abolish death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, what I wanted to point out to you here is that the scriptures surrounding that verse about we don't get into fear. We can't do fear. See, fear will affect our gifts from flowing. And I want you to know right now that if you're listening to my voice, I have uh, flowed in the prophetic. That's one of my gifts. I flowed in prophecy for for 35 years or longer and I and I don't say this pridefully I wouldn't dare but I can tell you that all prophecy that I've given has been fulfilled so I'm telling you right now that at the beginning of this year God spoke to me and said Ginger I am going to stir up the gifts in my body this year and they are going to begin to be loosed, to be freed up in the people. They're going to begin to come up. People, My people are going to begin to identify their gifting uh, by the Spirit of God, in the Spirit of God, as never before. And about the time that you're identifying, God's going to put it to work. Now, you can receive that word. God will put it to work. He will bring it out of you and he will take you out and allow that, that gifting to go do what he gave it to you to do in the first place. It's not for you. It's Your gifting is not for you. It's to be given to the world. Then he goes on here and he talks about don't be ashamed of the testimony. Now, let me say <clears throat> that Jesus made it perfectly clear in the scriptures and how relevant this is to today and our this day right now. Um, I have shared with you so many times, people who follow Izzy Harriet and Company, that my in my experience in 2004, the Lord spoke to me that persecution in the church will be on the increase in the in these days to come why because matthew 24 14 is being fulfilled right now as we speak 
in a huge way. The word of God is going forth into nations that it's never been allowed in before. It's going into many areas through satellite that was never around before. Do you realize this? And I'll get on a wrong path here if I'm not careful. But So persecution is uh, heating up. Trust me. People in countries and even in our own United States of America today are beginning to be persecuted for their faith. The faith, Christianity, is beginning to suffer things in this country. Here it says, Be not thou therefore ashamed. And let me tell you something else. There are things in this day, especially in our country, that are beginning to happen that we absolutely know are not the will of God. Now, we don't have to be bold and blatant and, and um, crass and injurious. That's not God. God wants us to speak the truth in love. But nonetheless, he wants us to speak the truth. We are to continue no matter what the flood tide is in our society when the order of things when society begins to change the order of things and it doesn't match God's order, come on, Nebuchadnezzars and uh, Daniels that are going to bow down and worship the idol that's being set up for you. That's not just a physical idol, let me tell you. <clears throat> Those are things that oppose the very word of God, standards, principles of God that we're called to live in. To live our lives in for, for our own benefit, for our own well-being, for our own blessing. When the world sets up another standard, we can't bow down and we can't get fearful. We can't get fearful of the repercussions, the persecution that might come against us. He says here, be not, and it's connected to the main scripture that everybody quotes in the bible for god has not given us a spirit of fear but power and love and a sound mind what for so our gifts can flow freely yes so that our testimony can flow freely <laughs> glory to god so the gospel can flow freely right and that Jesus Christ can still be made known amongst men. Oh my goodness. Did you know all of that was surrounding this one verse here? So it's not just unto us. It's not just uh, personal for us, you know, to receive. Whoops, here we go. Um, it, it, it's for the world. Jesus wants us loosed. Do you remember when Jesus went to the cross? What happened to all the disciples? <laughs> Where did they go? They ran. They fled. <laughs> Why? Because of fear. They didn't want to suffer the persecution. They saw Jesus be dragged off. Right? Right? By all these soldiers, they knew what was coming because he had told them. And when they came to get him, they didn't come kindly. They came with swords. They came to take him away. And the disciples fled. They went and they hid, right? And that's what this says here. We're not to be ashamed, but that we would be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. How many of you are going to stand up for, stand along, if not in any other way than prayer and intercession for those who are severely persecuted in the church today. You've been given, not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind that even the gift of intercession, even the, 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 the beautiful, beautiful, powerful, uh, gift of prayer by the Holy Spirit, Romans 8, again, Romans 8, 26 and 27 talks about it. Use that 
Stop being intimidated. Stop being fearful because when you are, it is a sin before God. All of these things are a part of those good works that we were created for in Ephesians 2.10. God wants us operating in those gifts freely. He doesn't want us wrapped up, tangled up in all kinds of fear and inhibitions about these things. No, 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 no. And that's why God says in Deuteronomy 6, what, take my word, you walk through your house, you teach your family. Why? So that you all can operate freely amongst each other without fear without intimidation this as for me and my house we're gonna serve god we're gonna obey this we're gonna obey the word of god we're not gonna bow down to any idol that our country might set up for us to bow down to we know the truth the truth has made us free and we're gonna stay in that truth and we're gonna make that truth known Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. It's exciting. It's powerful. But it won't be exciting and it won't be powerful if you don't remain in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 and realize how important, crucial it is that we do not operate in fear. We will not be intimidated <laughs> no matter what comes, no matter how dark the darkness we're going to get brighter, right? We're going to shine brighter. No matter how close the persecution comes to our own doorstep. If I'm persecuted in my own home, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to operate in love because love is mentioned there. Power, love, and a sound mind. I believe that sound mind is also God. If you stay out of fear... A sound mind is God being able to pour in wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. So many people having so many troubles in this day. They're trouble with finances, uh, trouble with children. You know what I mean? Brand new situations that are, are, you know, trouble with natural disasters, all of it. Where are you going to get the wisdom to overcome? Because God says his people will overcome. Yes, he says that in his word. He causes us always to triumph in Christ. No weapon formed against us can prosper. These are real things that we're supposed to be partakers of here, not over there, not when we're gone, not when we're in heaven. We're going to need it there. We need it now. And God, isn't it awesome that God came and gave us all the goodness that he gave us to empower us and to welcome us to live this kind of life with him. Okay? But if you get into fear over a situation, you block the wisdom of God from pouring into you. You just need to get in that hot bath. You just need to sit down. You need to get comfortable. You need to soak in the presence of God. You need to get into the deep, run that water Hi, I mean, don't drown, but it wouldn't maybe hurt you if you did drown in the presence of God, right? I shared on Facebook this week, if you're drowning, I can't remember what I said now, but but I hope you're drowning in, in the goodness of God, okay? Um, but get in that place, get in that place, posture yourself, position yourself, refuse the temptation to fear don't talk about the issue shut it off shut the spigot off run the water of his presence but shut off the water of fear do you understand what i'm saying the flow shut it off <clears throat> and bring in the flow of god that will bring a sound mind that's part of a sound mind is having the wisdom of god to know how to operate in every situation so that you can triumph well, I'm feeling triumphant just sharing with you right now all of these things. I'm just feeling so triumphant, aren't you? And that's what the Word of God does for us. It reminds us of who we are in Christ Jesus. So quickly, before we close out this segment, because we're going to have to do that here 
in a few minutes. Let's go to Isaiah 54 and look at verse 